But if you have a healthy mitochondrial electron transport chain, it's de decreasing the amount of ATP you're producing. That's been mm. reproducibly shown. So a healthy human is not benefiting from methylene blue. So Paul Saladino says that methylene blue can actually decrease energy production in healthy mitochondria. And I'm going to explain in this video why he's both right and wrong about this and why I, as a relatively healthy older person, am using methylene blue regularly at a low dose. Now, first, let me say that I think Paul's absolutely amazing. He's obviously super smart, very well read, and I love his philosophy on, on, on health and healthcare. Also, his animal-based diet is quite amazing, and I actually incorporate a lot of the elements that he's promoting into my diet, except for raw milk. And that's because I grew up on a farm and our neighbor actually uh, had cows. And once in a while, I would go over there and we were allowed to milk the cows. Now, they had milking machines, of course, but sometimes you had to milk the cows by hand. And these cows, they stand in a mix of mud and poop all day long. And as they are moving about, you know, that stuff splashes on their udders. And then they just take a garden hose and <laughs> rinse that off and then put the milking machine on or we milk them by hand. Now, you got this bucket afterwards with this beautiful, creamy, very good tasting um, raw milk with a few specks of black pigments in there. And it's your guess what those are, right? So now I'm sure that when they make commercially available raw milk here in the United States, that they test the milk, that they're making sure there's no contaminants in there. But I would just be thinking about uh, E. coli all day long if I drank that. So that's just an aside. But back to methylene blue. So methylene blue, what we have to understand, it's a hormetic drug. It's a hormetic medication or hormetic supplement, whatever you want to call it. Now, that means that at an appropriate dose or at, at a lower dose, it's actually very supportive of your mitochondria. And it does absolutely support the um, electron transport chain, helping your um, mitochondria to make more ATP. And this is also in healthy cells. At the same time, it decreases um, radical oxygen species. So it breaks down this waste that's produced in energy production. So it's making the, cell, the cells healthier. It helps with energy production. And it's actually a net benefit. And since it crosses the blood-brain barrier, a lot of these benefits are felt in your brain. So it helps with memory, concentration, all these things at the appropriate dose. Now, at a dose that's too high, it behaves in the opposite way. That's what a hormetic drug does. So then it actually becomes a pro-oxidant and it can actually induce hydrogen peroxide in our cells. It can cause some radical oxygen species. Now, when our healthy cells, that's not a huge problem, but it can, in very high doses, of course, decrease energy production in that way because it behaves in a very aggressive way then. And the problem is that the doses that are listed in the literature usually refer to the doses that we use when we use it intravenously in the emergency room. And it's used for carbon monoxide poisoning or cyanide poisoning. When we think of cyanide poisoning, which is super rare today, of course, but in cyanide poisoning, complex four in the respiratory uh, chain is damaged. And uh, methane blue can sort of bridge that and bypass that and still allow functionality in the mitochondria, which prevents people from dying from it, which, of course, a fantastic treatment. But these doses recommended for intravenous use are 0.5 to 4 milligrams per kilogram. And that's a huge dose. So for me, this will be between, between 40 and 320 milligrams, which I would never take. So I take currently five milligrams daily, which is much, much lower dose than that. And a lot of people kind of do very well when they take between five and 15 milligrams daily total. This is, of course, much, much lower than the literature doses that are recommended for intravenous use. But this confusion is out there because that's the only recommendations that we have. And people look that up and they take too much of it. Now, sometimes we are purposely taking too much of it when it's used, for example, in cancer treatment. There's something called photodynamic therapy, where higher doses of methane blue in general are used together with red light, usually around uh, 670 nanometers. So one of the benefits of methylene blue is that at high concentrations, it becomes a pro-oxidant. And it is concentrated in very high amounts in cancer cells because they cannot regulate uptake. Your healthy cells will regulate uptake. So they usually don't take in too much of methylene blue. Sometimes in very high concentrations, a bit too much gets in, but the cell is very tightly regulating this usually. Cancer cells have lost that ability, so they get flooded with methylene blue. And then again, at these high concentrations, it becomes a pro-oxidant. It produces things like hydrogen peroxide, which ultimately will destroy the cancer cells. It's a very selective medication in that sense for cancer cells if we get it in there in adequate amounts. Now, when we use it together with red light around 670 nanometers, it becomes more reactive and it becomes more destructive in that sense. And so we can really weed out cancer cells in this, in this way. Now, again, healthy cells regulate uptake to some extent, but also they can make enzymes to break down hydrogen peroxide if it should be produced. Cancer cells lack that enzyme, so they cannot defend themselves against the hydrogen peroxide produced. So methane blue very selectively destroys cancer cells and at higher concentrations, 
yes, your normal cells, your healthy cells, might have a slight decrease in energy production because then it can disrupt the electron transport chain. And here, Paul is correct. So again, if a healthy person takes too much methylene blue, they can certainly make less energy. And that is not a good thing. But in the right amounts, again, it supports the electron transport chain. You make a good amount of energy and it's very supportive of the mitochondria. In very high amounts, it's a problem. Now, in general, we can say if someone is really healthy, like Paul, for example, I would argue is a very healthy person. You know, he's doing everything right. He's living near the equator. He is in the sun. He's eating extremely healthy. He's not eating any toxic foods, anything like that. He's young. So he really probably doesn't benefit from methylene blue. And I would totally agree with that. But if you think of 90% of the population, you know, we all have some issues with our mitochondria. And um, mitochondrial dysfunction can lead to cancer, can lead to autoimmune disorders, can lead to diabetes. And when you look at the United States, for example, most people are metabolically not very healthy. And again, this is about 90% of the population. Also, when we get older, we have less mitochondria. So not only do the mitochondria not work so well, but we have less of them. So energy production slows down. And this is part of aging. This is part of having less cellular function. And there, in an aging population, methylene blue, I think, is a very helpful uh, supplement or drug, however, whatever you want to call it. Because, again, it can support the mitochondria, it can support energy production, and this is very important, especially in the brain. And it gets concentrated also in the brain in higher amounts and can be very good for the neurons in the brain. So there's a lot of studies at even lower doses, around 15 to 17 milligrams, where it's used in the prevention and treatment of Alzheimer's dementia or Parkinson's disease. So any neurodegenerative disorder can benefit from methylene blue. Of course, we need more studies. None of this is a recommendation. You should always talk to your physician before starting methylene blue. There's certainly contraindications to using it as well. But I think this is sort of the misconception. Yes, it can cause problems at high concentrations. I would not recommend to listen to the uh, high concentrations that are listed in the literature. That is really for treating acute illness. And again, if you think of carbon monoxide poisoning, if you think of cyanide poisoning, or if you think of Lyme disease or any other uh, pathogen that we want to address, yes, higher concentrations may be necessary. And I'm saying may because there were some studies on photodynamic therapy where even lower concentrations around the 15 to 30 milligrams, which would not cause problems in healthy cells actually, can still be beneficial in photodynamic therapy and sufficient amounts still get in the cancer cells to destroy them. So that's actually very interesting. So we may even there not have to go overboard, right? So I think this is something that uh, we need to keep in mind. Taking too much of it is bad. Taking the right amount can be helpful. And yes, not everybody needs it. If you're a young person, if you're metabolically extremely healthy, you may not have any benefit from it, right? But me, over 50 or the general population in the United States having, you know, impaired uh, glucose tolerance or having issues uh, with their mitochondria for some other reason, or people worried about uh, mental cognitive decline, they will certainly benefit. I can tell you, for me personally, taking only five milligrams a day, in terms of my focus, memory, concentration, it helps me tremendously. I get a lot more things done. I can speak in almost complete sentences. So it's something that I think is a huge benefit. So hopefully this clears it up. Again, love Paul, love his content. In this case, he's both right and he's wrong, in my opinion. And it's not a recommendation for everyone. There are contraindications to methylene blue, certainly. But also, I think we shouldn't take away from this amazing supplement or drug because there are so many conditions that can be improved, especially in an aging population and in people that are metabolically not healthy, that we should really look into this more. I hope there's going to be more studies coming out in the future that we actually can make recommendations on its use. Also, I would love to have studies on this more in the realm of ADHD treatment. There is a lot of preliminary data that it might be super helpful. And when you think of children on, you know, Ritalin, on Adderall and all these medications, these stimulants, right? Methane blue may be a better fit there. Again, don't give this to your children. Talk to your pediatrician right now. This is not approved for these indications. But I think we should study this more and get data to see if this is helpful in this population. And I think it actually will be. So again, this is a great uh, supplement medication. Use it only uh, as directed. Don't listen to the high amounts that are listed out there. In my opinion, again, 5 to 50 milligrams for most, most people are very much sufficient. This is not a recommendation. Ask your doctor first. But I think it's an amazing supplement. Again, love Paul Saladino, and I think this was uh, very important to clear this up.